if we don't stand up for the things that we fundamentally believe in, which are the freedom of countries and islands to be able to dictate their own sense of where they should be, then I think this is a real problem for us because this will send the green light to what I think is a growing axis of authoritarian states. Sum up your concerns here because the, the, the meeting between the French president and the Chinese leader and, uh, and Emmanuel Macron's words clearly was something of a red flag to you. There's no, no pun intended there. Well, first of all, uh, the letter is not just from cross-party group MPs. Uh, the organisation which we set up called the Interparliamentary Alliance on China, it's now got 30 countries. You have two parliamentarians in each country, one on the left, one on the right, as co-chairs in each uh, country. Uh, those countries stretch from Japan to New Zealand, Australia, India, some Africa, a uh, lot in Europe, uh, Canada and the United States. And uh, we all got together when we heard his comments and issued the original letter. This was then joined by individuals from uh, the alliances inside those countries. So there's a lot of Labour and Conservative MPs from the UK who have signed up to that as well. So it's a very, very extensive, wide-ranging and cross-party letter from all around the world. And that's the key bit. What we believe and what we're concerned about is President Macron has rather casually gone to President Xi for three days. Uh, and in a way issued this statement afterwards, which kind of gave uh, Xi a green light to uh, get much more aggressive with Taiwan. He basically tries to dismiss the idea this is just an American affair, which it is not. And also then says that there's no reason why we should go along with the states or that we should consider this to be an issue for ourselves. China poses an enormous threat at the moment to the way we live our lives. They're guilty of genocide in Xinjiang and of huge uh, slave labor across their country's persecution, invasion of the South China Seas already, yeah. which the UN has said they were illegal, and of the crackdown in Hong Kong and the arrest of peaceful democracy campaigners who are now uh, looking to serve life. This is a country throwing its weight around in a way that is going to damage our lives uh, in the future. We need to be certain that they're clear that we won't put up with invasions uh, and territorial acquisitions. How do you interpret Emmanuel Macron's <laughs> position on this, I mean, has it to do, as far as you can see, with the French president saying that we've got a problem here in our in our well closer to our backyard when it comes to Ukraine and Russia, and the Chinese China tension over over Taiwan is just too remote? What do you think is driving his position? Well, mostly self interest, I think, as far as I can make out. Bear in mind that this is a man that has real form in this area. Back in 2014, he and Mrs. Merkel brokered a terrible peace in Ukraine when Russia unprovoked, invaded uh, the Crimea and then started supporting uh, separatist movements in parts of Ukraine. They forced uh, and bullied, you could say, the Ukrainian government at the time uh, to sign up to an agreement that left Russia in possession of their territory. It was that clear weakness from the West brokered by those two uh, that actually, I believe, led eventually and almost inevitably to another territorial grab, which we saw last year, and which is now still continuing this war in Ukraine. And even then, when that happened, it was President Macron that kept going back and forwards to Russia to these interminable, uh, and I thought rather pointless meetings with uh, President Putin to try and broker some kind of peace accord, leaving him in place in the territory that he had already seized, mm -hmm. which is literally not fair. And, and I think that the reality with that is, again, here he goes. He's also made comments, by the way, about President Putin saying we mustn't, you mustn't, you know, kind of crush him or do anything else. We have to find a, a peaceful settlement that would leave him with his territories. Now, this is a man who seems to fiddle around on the edge of this and not, uh, and, and has upset a huge amount of Eastern Europe, by the way, in his comments. And by the way, you know, if we don't stand up for the things that we fundamentally believe in, which are the freedom of countries and islands to be able to dictate their own sense of where they should be, then I think this is a real problem for us because this will send the green light to what I think is a growing axis of authoritarian states from Korea, China, Russia, Tehran, and many others in Africa as well. This is becoming a serious problem for us. Well, to, to put the, the ultimate question very simply and crudely, Ian, do you believe that we, the UK, should be prepared to go to war with China? I mean, the American president, Joe Biden, did suggest not so long ago that America might intervene directly where Taiwan to be invaded. Should we be prepared to, to go to war with China and to make that clear? No, I think what we need to be able to make sure is that China understands that an attempt to take the island by force or to uh, 
uh, reduce their population by uh, an attempted blockade uh, would be considered to be utterly wrong by us, and we would take whatever necessary action in line with our allies. Uh, the, the Secretary General of NATO has already made this clear uh, very recently to say that, you know, as far as they're concerned, Taiwan is uh, an island that needs to have the support of the West and the alliance. And I think it's exactly the same as that. Because the moment China, you, you should understand, President Xi has made no, you know, he doesn't hide what he wants. He believes that his form of government, that dictatorial form of government that brooks no uh, no disagreement, that arrests those who uh, don't agree with him, that uh, puts people into slave labor, creates, uh, commits genocide. He is very economically very powerful because of the West's rush to get goods made there. Yeah. And as a result of that, he wants to throw his weight around. And what he's saying is our form of government, he said this publicly, is the only form of government, democracy and freedoms, are all an aberration of the last 150 to 200 years. Yeah. But this form of government is the right one. That is a real threat to all of us, not just to Taiwan. Yes, yeah, but, the, but the question of direct military engagement is not a purely <laughs> academic one. In the case of Ukraine, uh, the West, NATO, European allies, including the United Kingdom, is supplying the Ukrainian military, who are doing a, a fair job of resisting uh, the, the, the might of, of Russia. China is a different proposition if they are threatening an island like Taiwan and supplying may not may not do the trick. Would we should we be would we be prepared to fight? Well, the first thing is we need to make sure that Taiwan is quite capable of defending itself. Uh, and that is the case at the moment. The Americans uh, have been supplying them. And I think we should do the same. I think the West needs to recognize uh, that if Taiwan does not want to be a part of China, then Taiwan has the right not to be a part of China. I've never agreed in this idea of one China policy because the Chinese government uh, didn't ag made an agreement with us over Hong Kong in which they would allow Hong Kong to continue very much as it was before with a, a different form of government under a more liberal set of laws. But they have now decided to tear that up. And they thought that that might induce Taiwan to join them. But Taiwan never trusted them because they always said when the moment comes, China will impose itself. Well, they've done that on Hong Kong now. So the lessons are there for us. Taiwan has a population of, what, 24, 25 million. Uh, uh, they have an elected government and a democracy, and they wish to continue as they are. Uh, and it was always the case that it was up to them if they wished to rejoin. In fact, they've always the history shows that there was never an absolute connection or a link between China and Taiwan in the way that President Xi maintains there was. And so the reality for them is it's up to them. It cannot be enforced on them, this idea they have to be part of China. And certainly any attempt to military invade uh, is, a, is an appalling concept because the death and the, and the terrible consequences. If we learn nothing from Ukraine, we learn that we need to be ahead of these processes and make sure that Taiwan is capable of defending itself to such a degree that uh, China thinks that the risks of invading this island would be too great. Well, I'm John Pienaar, and if you found that interesting, we are here each day, Monday to Thursday, five o'clock till seven o'clock on Drive, and from seven till eight, Pienaar and Friends, where we discuss the big stories of the day each day on Times Radio.